Hello friends, welcome to my channel Sushant Chess Files. Today we are going to have a look at the next topic that is the game study based on counter gambit style. Let us understand what is counter gambit. See, generally whenever a side plays gambit, the opponent has two choices. Let's take for example e4, e5, f4. Why it is sacrificing pawn in the opening which we call gambit. This pawn is offered, but instead of taking the gambit or declining the gambit, well, we offer gambit ourselves. So that is when black plays a move like d5 himself and he is ready to offer the pawn on e5 or ready to offer the pawn on d5. Such a play is called counter gambit. So instead of taking the pawn or defending the pawn, we offer a pawn ourselves. So we are going to discuss a game where the gambit play is met by or we can say countered by a counter gambiting idea. Today's game is basically continuation of a game or the idea which we discussed in lesson 117 where we discussed about the opening French nations e4, e6, d4, d5, knight c3, bb4. In that game what we saw? White has various ways to give gambit of the e4 pawn and after qg4 he gets one of the pawn back. In today's lesson we will see how black can use a counter gambiting idea. Instead of just holding to the pawn, he returns the pawn and he returns the which is unimportant. White can go to the gambit play in various ways. The e4 pawn can be offered by the move bd2, ne2 and a3. I have discussed this in more detail in lesson 170. In this game, white went with the move a3. <coughs> Bishop into c3. Most obvious move without wasting the move. Black exchanges the knight and he gets the pawn on e4. So this is how white has given up a pawn and for what he has given, he is saying I got the bishop pair, my center is better controlled. The black's extra pawn is the one which is doubled and if I want, I can get one of one back by queen <coughs> e4 or qg7. So this is where black's concept comes into play. In earlier olden days players used to play generally g6 or king f8 and give up the pawn on e4 because g7 cannot be given up, right? But in the modern play, what players understood, it is not just about the g7 pawn. But if white is, uh, if black is able to hold this e4 pawn, then white's development becomes very difficult, especially this bishop and knight. The e4 pawn stops knight f3 and also blocks bishop d3. So this e4 pawn is very important. So here the counter attacking style or the counter gambit style comes into effect. Black goes nf6 offers the g7 pawn and generates very good play. Let's see what happens. Queen takes g7. Almost first, otherwise white will remain pawn down for nothing. So rook g8, queen h6 and a timely rook g6 will follow. Now the first point is, because of the counter gambit, the play has become imbalanced. The pawn structure is totally asymmetrical. There is nothing common in the pawn structure. Black has got g5 open. White has got b5 open, both kings are right now in the center and black is, we can say the one who has the initiative because already two developed pieces, one pawn on the fifth rank controlling important squares and on top of that the move is also black's now. So black goes with the strong move c5. At this point white has a very difficult choice to make. Because dc we can see is very bad. dc will allow queen a5 at some point. Right now may not be queen a5 because of queen into f6. But after dc, rook g6, qh4, black and go qa5. White has to protect the d4 pawn and he has several ways. Immediate b3 will allow qa5 when c3 will be weak. So white goes for a better move, knight e2. Knight keeps control of c3 and d4, both the knight is ready to go to g3 in many variations and this bishop can go to g5 
putting pressure on the F6 knight. Of course, whenever BG5 comes, black has got the move rook G6. Black was in C6. Now the play is revolving around the center on the D4 square. White can go bishop G5. As I told you, after bishop G5, rook G6, QH4, many a times in these kind of cases, the move H6 comes to effect. Such a play was seen in one of the games by Bobby Fischer. When after bishop H6, Fischer was white and black tried to generate play by the moves in G4 and E3. So first there will be queen A5. So CD, CD, queen A5 check and then in G4 at an appropriate moment. Here in the game, white went for a very strange move. At this point, theory says that it's best to go for the move dc4 or dc5 trying to hold the pawn although the pawns are doubled white has got bishop pair and knight can come to d4 in future maybe he can return one of the pawn black can do rook g6 queen h4 queen a5 as i mentioned and the play remains very unclear in the game white chose the move bb2 far better as i told him was the move bishop g5 after bishop b2 White very well protects the d4 pawn, but the bishop is very oddly placed on the b2 square. Bishop lacks space and it can be attacked immediately. So black to play here. Okay, I want you to think for some time and try to find the right move for black. I hope you must have found either the move qb6 or the move rook g6. Both are decent. Black first goes for the move qb6. Setting an additional trap. Now after queen into f6, queen comes to b2 and a1, a3 and c2 all are attacked simultaneously. This makes the position clearly favorable for black. So after rook c1, white can be in trouble after the move queen a3 when the a pawn becomes a first pawn. The important move could have been queen c1 supporting the bishop. But white must have thought that after qc1, bd7, his pieces are very passive and black is ready to play cd cd rook c8, sometimes cd cd long castle and generate good play in the center. White is still struggling to develop his pieces properly as we know that moment the knight goes to g3, d4 will be taken. But qc1 was better as compared to the game. White went rook b1 and this creates a self pin. The bishop is unable to move for a very long time and there are serious problems. So black went rook g6 attacking the queen. Again here qc1 was perhaps the only correct move. White went qh4 eyeing the e4 pawn. In future he wants to go for mg3. White is also <coughs> trying to use knight f4. When knight attacks the rook and if the rook moves, queen is attacking f6. That is the main reason for playing the queen to h4. But we see that black's initiative has already become quite dangerous. Let's count the developments and see. 1, 2, 3, 4 plus the pawn on the 5th rank. So we can count as 5 developments. The pieces are very active. They are all ahead. Look at white. 1, 2, 3 and the rook on b1 which has moved but which cannot be counted as developed in this case. b2 bishop is unable to move. So just two developments that to the knight is still on the second right. So the position is already passive. Black takes the initiative now. c into d4. c into d4. Bishop d7. And this bd7 move is the final phase of development, rook is already eyeing the c8 square and black is looking to break the center any moment, either long castle e5 is on the cards or rook c8 followed by knight a5, knight c4 is there. Here white has many ways, white went for the move knight f4. I told you the move queen h4 had idea of going knight f4, harassing the rook and putting pressure on the f6 knight. At this point, it's very difficult to recommend something good for white. Because we see that 
apart from knight f4, no other piece can move. White can consider the move g3. But after g3, there could be rook g4 at any moment. Right now, there is no rook g4, knight is attacked. So after move like g3, black can go long castle and then he can try to move the knight of c6. The main idea would have been knight f4 and here black has to find the right move. Of course, black had seen this before playing the move bd7. So black to play and we are trying to look for a concrete variation. We can say that already it's like a black to play and win position, but some complicated analysis follows. Just now we counted the development and we saw that black has two more and the move is also his. So comes the move knight d4. Very strong, sets a trap, knight g6 loses by 4. White has only two other things which he can try here. One is very important move bishop c4. The bishop comes out and white is about to castle and escape. Of course, here, very interesting analysis follows. After bishop c4, black doesn't give white any chance. Black goes knight f5, queen is attacked, queen has only one place, queen h3, again rook h6, queen is attacked, again queen has only place on c3, and here white, <coughs> white is already in trouble. One, he can use the move e3. After e3, things look very difficult for white. Suppose castles. Perhaps this is one of the only ways because after Fe there can be 94. 94 although allows QHH check. Fe 93 is very strong. Knight attacks the bishop. Knight attacks the g2 pawn. Which can give decent play. Maybe white is uh, close to losing position. Also after Fe there is the move knight g3 which attacks the rook on h1. So castle. After castle, it's almost black to play and win. EF2 check. Rook into F2. And then comes the finishing blow. Queen F2 check. King F2. Knight E4 check. Followed by Knight C3. And then Rook C8 follows. So black will be exchange up. Plus he will attack both these bishops. And the position is, we can say that, losing. Because black has an extra pawn also in that position. F2. King h1, then we see that this queen is overloaded. Black wants to use knight g3 mate. What should black play here? So it's good if you have found the move knight e4. Instantly, game is over. Two threats on g3 and the queen is attacked. And do note that after the move qh8, this time just ke7. Because the queen is attacked and waiting threat on the g3 square. Do note that. After bf6 check, knight takes f6. We don't want the rook to go away from the h5. So bf6 check, knight f6. No time for rook b6 because of knight g3 mate. No time for rook f2. Queen f2 is also hanging. h8 is also hanging. qb1 is also hanging. And black wins the game very easily. Let's go back to the game. Perhaps the most challenging line was the move bishop d4 where things look slightly difficult for black after the move qb1 check king goes to d2 and now suddenly f6 is attacked and g6 is attacked but do note that the king position on d2 is very weak and black has to find a simple tactic based on e3 check after e3 check we are using clearance of the square knight is in the e4 square and in all variations, there are different problems. If king takes e3 check, qc1 check, if king comes to e2, then bb5 check, and it's game over. So, bishop e3 forced, knight e4 check. Now, black has to, the white has to keep the c2 pawn protected. If ke2, then queen c2 check, king f3. Problem with kd3 is bishop b5 check, ke4, qc2 check, which gives a winning position. So, qc2 check, king is trying to hide, 
नाइट किंग एफ थ्री नाइट जी फाइव चेक के जी थ्री एंड हियर कम्स अनदर सिंपल टैक्टिक नाइट एफ थ्री चेक मेनी अनएक्सपेक्टेड मूव आर देर बट वी कैन मेक फ्रॉम दिस किंग पोजिशन एंड ब्लैक एक्टिव पीसेस दैट वाइट इज गोइंग टू गेट मेटेड सो फोर्स किंग एफ थ्री क्वीन इज अटैक्ट no time for knight g6 because of knight h4 and after kf3 bishop c6 check and it's game over so the game will follow extend for a move or two knight d5 bd5 kf4 and choice of mates by queen e4 and queen f5 so but this was slightly more difficult to exploit as compared to the game in the game the force series of moves followed and so after the move knight g6 when white is actually challenging black to that the position is winning for black so black got a force mating seven here after the moves knight c2 check now if the king comes to e2 then bb5 check is possible so king d2 queen d6 check black is trying to break the position as forced as possible After the move, K C one very strong. Rook C eight, and if knight moves away, then the black knight will also move to E three, using a discovered check. And Bishop C four allows uh, knight C four allows Q D one mate. After the move, Bishop C four here, which happens to be a better attempt because now Q D one is not checkmate. Here black can go for just knight into c4, and after knight c4, rook c4, bishop c3, rook c3, kd2, queen can come to K, kb2, queen can come to d2, king a1, and rook a3 mates. So all the moves are forced. Check bishop c3, rook c3, kb2, qd2 check. Even the move queen a3 mates instantly, so king a1 and rook a3 mates. After king c2, we can already make out the position is lost by now. All the pieces, rook, bishop, and queen, all the three join the attack, and the e4 pawn is close enough. So bishop a4 check, rook c8 would allow bishop c3. So this is more forced. Now king has to go to c3. Then comes. Rook c8 check, post bishop c4, and now it's very easy to spot. Queen d3 check, a mating three follows. King moves to b4. Qc4 check. King a5, and now choice between b6 and qb5 check. Black played qb5 in the game and won. So, what we saw here, how the king was caught in the center. Of course, we can say both kings were in the center, and this was my attempt to show you what is counter gambit and what is basically the <coughs> thought process in a counter gambit. We need not hold the material; we can even make a counter sacrifice. I hope you are enjoying these lessons. Do like, share, and subscribe the channel. Thanks for your attention.